how we do it this morning. Is it a blessing to be in the Lord's house once again? Amen, amen, amen. We are worthy to be praised. We welcome in our Facebook Live audience. We truly bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on this wonderful Lord's Day. And we truly thank God for those who are tuning in with us here in person or by the way of Facebook Live to join us at Google Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. First of all, we want to give big shouts out to all fathers. Come on, let's give it up to fathers. Amen. For Father's Day, a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to be an example to our children as fathers. And if we don't have no other example to look to, we have our Heavenly Father. Amen? Uh, we're grateful that the Bible tells us that even if our father, earthly father, mother forsake us, the Lord will take us up and we can learn a lot from our Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen. Also, we excited that on yesterday, yesterday it was Juneteenth. Come on, y'all. Let's give it up. Amen. Amen. Now, next month, next month, July 4th, America, come down from the streets. America celebrates uh, our national independence. Amen? Let me say it again. Fourth of July, America celebrates our national independence. But Juneteenth, 1865, we celebrated the fact, finally, that we were made free as human beings delivered from slavery. Can we give God a hand up and praise for that? Amen. Amen. And truly, God is good. Also, I want to take time to thank God for my wonderful wife. Happy birthday to my wife. Amen. And I was teasing her the other day. I said, wow, when I began to think about it, I said, wow, we've been together since we were 20, so you've been with me 29 years. Oh, more than half of your life, but... I want to tell Beulah this, the reason I'm able to serve Beulah the way I'm able to serve Beulah is because of my help me. Amen? Amen? My wife is there. She doesn't hinder me from giving you my everything, giving God my everything as it relates to meeting Beulah. And Terrain, I want to say thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, it's such a blessing that we walk together. How can two walk together except they be one in agreement? Amen? Also, it is Communion Sunday. Amen? Those who are watching my Facebook Live, after the preaching of God's Word, we're going to take communion together, our first communion together in our new location, but it's the same Lord. Amen? Amen. With that being said, let us pray. Father, in the gracious and wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for being who you are. You are El Shaddai. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy once again, allowing us to see another Lord's day. Holy Spirit of the living God, we need your power and your presence. Move among the people of God in a way that when the benediction is given, we would know that we've been in the presence of the Most High. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for being who you are. You are our faithful high priest. You're seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank you for forever making intercession for us. Thank you for being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we're praying for trans transformation today. We're praying that some man, some woman who does not know you, that today such conviction will come and they will bow unto your majesty, your sovereignty. Father, grace us for the task that you have granted us to be a part of the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus, you be exalted in our midst. These are all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise and please can you stand to your feet as our choir sings our own selection.
is. Amen? To be able to resurrect our dead spirits and grant us life eternal. That's a mighty God. Can we give it up for God once again? Amen, amen, amen. Once again, I want to remind you, new location, but it's the same Lord. And he deserves our praise. Amen? Amen. Once again, we welcome in our Facebook Live audience, thank you, choir, for that wonderful selection. Those who were here last week, uh, we've been working through a series, and we are grateful. Find with me the book of Jude. The book of Jude. It's a one-chapter book in the New Testament, just before the book of Revelation. The book of Jude. I pray that everyone will either get your copy of God's Word or your electronic device because we want to follow along in the Word of God. Amen? Amen. This current series that we're in is entitled, Let's Get Ready to Rome. Amen? Amen? Because Jude lays out clearly that we as the church, the bride of Christ, must contend for the faith. Amen? The book of Jude. Uh, for time's sake, uh, our target scripture is verse 3, Jude pins this, which is a parallel to the book of 2 Peter. If you go and read the book of 2 Peter, you'll see that Jude and Peter are parallel books because they both deal with the false teachers and the apostate. Amen? Uh, Peter uh, alludes to this, and now Jude piggybacks off what Peter says, and this is what verse 3 says in the book of Jude, the love. While I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation. We talked about last week, Jews desire. Jews desire to talk about salvation. But Jews had to take a detour. Amen? Sometimes there are things that are a higher priority than others. And though salvation is a great topic to talk about, Jews said, I can't talk about it. I got to take my pen and my paper in another direction. He said, Beloved, when I was very diligent, I was eager to write to you concerning our common salvation. I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. For what? Certain men. Now he had a desire, he takes a detour, and now he begins to describe these false teachers that were trying to lead the people in the apostasy. He said, for certain men have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want you to, I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved an everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of that great day. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth. As an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Let us pray. Father, you are mighty God. Lord Jesus, thank you for your power and your majesty. Holy Spirit, thank you for your power and your presence in the life of us as believers. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, be glorified in this place. Touch hearts. Whether it's in person or through Facebook Live, transform us, Lord. Don't allow us to be the service the same. These are all that we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. And in our hearts, amen. 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 You may be seated. Once again, thank you for those who tune in by Facebook Live and those who are in person. Once again, sing us with me. Best. Best. Get ready. Get ready. To run. Let me say that again. Y'all had it, y'all still speak. Let's get ready to run. Uh, many times people have this wrong misconception about Christianity. And the mindset, just because we are to walk in love, we they, they have this mindset that we are to be so soft that we just let anything go. 
But now as we are going to dig deeper into the book of Jude, Jude begins to tell the believers back then, and he's telling us now, we can't be soft when it comes to defending the faith. What Jude simply begins to outline for us here in verse 3 of his book, Jude says, there comes a time that we as men and women of God must, go, must roll up our shirt sleeve and be ready to fight. Once again, we're not talking about a physical fight. We're talking about a spiritual fight. Paul alludes to that in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle not. Our hand-to-hand -hand combat is not between flesh and blood, but it lies in the spirit realm. As I begin to start the series off last week, I begin to tell us kind of boldly, there are some things that you and I must be willing to fight for as children of God. Jesus came, he died, he was buried, but early that Sunday morning, Jesus got up to give us eternal life, and there comes a time you and I must be willing to fight for what Jesus has given us a right to. Remember what I said last week, now people have the audacity to say that there's another way to salvation other than Jesus Christ. I say, let's get ready. Oh, are y'all feeling me this morning? Uh, people want to change God's ordained order for marriage between a male and female church. Let's get ready. They want to say that you can't trust the Bible. The Bible is the inerrant, everlasting word of God. And church, I draw the line in there and say, let's get ready. This is what you do. You say there comes a time you and I must be ready to fight. And what Jude is going to do today, Jude is going to lead us with some historical examples of apostasy. Let, are y'all still with me? Uh, what Jude is going to do now, Jude is going to go back through the corridors of time, and Jude is going to show us some historical, this is why to historical examples of apostasy. I want us to get that word again in case you was not here last week. The word apostasy means a departure from truth. <laughs> Y'all making it stay harder than what it should be. The word apostasy, apostasy means departure from the truth. This is what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. This is what Paul said to his young mother study, his mentee Timothy. Paul says, and they will turn their ears from the truth and be turned aside to fables. This is what Jude is addressing here. False teachers have what? Crept in. They have come in trying to be unnoticed. And they want to pollute the place of God, the people of God with false doctrine. That the apostasy can take place. In other words, the false teacher wants to lead the people of God away from God's truth. And we got to say like Jude, let's get ready. Let's get ready to run. Paul said there's going to come a time when men will gather to themselves. Guess what? That time is here. People don't want a preacher that's going to simply stand up, open up the word of God, under the power of the spirit of God, and declare what God has said. They want somebody to prophesy to them. I know God says, I have set my kingdom up. I grace, I give the person to stand up and instruct you in the way of righteousness. Paul said there's going to come a time when men will gather to themselves, teachers having what? Itchy ears. And they will turn themselves away from the truth. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. Paul in his letter to the Romans alludes to this too. Paul said, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Can we speak? Are y'all are, are still awake out there? Uh, what Paul says here to the people at Rome, he said there comes a time because people want to live in their ungodliness. There comes a time because people want to live in their unrighteousness. They will suppress the truth. They will push the truth away. How many know we're living in that time now? And I'm not talking about in the world. I'm talking about even in the church. But I draw the line. Back in the day when I was out in Iraq, I just needed one or two that were willing to fight with me. <laughs> and we could get a lot done if we just had men and women that were willing to fight for what Jesus came to give us. And that is 
everlasting life. Jude makes it clear in verse 3. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. I'm not going to let that, uh, you know, I'm not going to let you just Let's get ready. Because this is the thing, Minister Dawson. If I begin to have a sports conversation with you, and I'll tell you that Michael is doing only one full championship, you would debate with me. <laughs> oh, I'm pushing it right now. If I told that Tom Brady, that some people here will argue me up with we'll Google and find if I say Tom Brady only won five Super Bowl rings. No one ain't he won seven. This is that. But it's amazing when it comes to the defending the faith, we keep our mouth up. We are debate, we are arguing about things that don't amount to a hill of beans. But when it comes to the word of God and the Christian faith, many of us are sitting by Why? Remember what I said last week? There are some things we can no longer sit down on. We got to stand up. And when it comes to continuing for the faith, church, we got to stand up and tell the world, let's get ready to rumble. To rumble. We're going to look at Jude. Lays out for us several historical examples of apostasy. Once again, what does the word apostate mean? It means? It means a departure. It means a turning away from the truth. And right now we see even in the church, those who are afraid to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. The truth. We are now cowarding away from the truth. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 4, we are to speak the truth in we're not talking about being nasty, being mean-spirited. We're talking about in love, stand up, put your big boy pants, your big girl pants up, and speak the truth in. When someone try to tell you there's another way to salvation, you got to stand up and say, no, it's not. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no one can come unto the Father except by me. Jesus, let's get ready to rumble. But the reason to many many Christians can fight is because they don't know what's in the book. Remember what I said last week. I don't mean this in a derogatory manner, but when it comes to scripture, many Christians are, get this word, illiterate. Don't know what's in the New Testament or what's in the Old Testament. Don't even know how many books in the Bible there are. Don't even know the basic things of salvation. Remember what I said last week. You pay your mortgage and when the Jehovah Witness comes to Jehovah Witness, got you hiding in your own house. <laughs> because you can't defend the faith. But now Jude is going to lay out some historical examples of apostasy or apostates. Here is a quote about history. Those who fail to learn from history are condemned or doomed to what? Did, uh, 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 uh. Those who do not learn from history, those who not go back and look at what happened previously, are doomed or condemned to repeat it. And turn, if we don't take time to look back in scripture to see that there are all been false teachers and false prophets and God dealt with them back then God is going to deal with them again but we got to fight we got to be willing to say let's get ready now I'm not that big and I'm not that bad but I was always bold enough that if, I, if a fight came to me I was going to fight I never left my house looking for a fight but now if a joker tried me we were going to fight if somebody try you at your job tomorrow, talking about you can't trust that Jesus Christ is God, you got to be, let's get ready to grumble. Some people don't know one scripture to go to to be able to defend Jesus' deity as God. And have been in the church all their lives. It's tight, but it's right. Remember what I said, we as a people, and I'm not trying to insult us as a culture. We're like a wiggle in the gym. Mm -hmm. See, we like to go to church and get our emotions wrapped up. Now, God gave us our emotions. There ain't nothing wrong with our emotions. But what good is getting all emotions if you ain't learning nothing? Mm -hmm. Oh, we got 
have some educators up in here, some parents that need to be educated. And if your child came from that school not learning anything, you'll go down there to Bull Street. How dare my child go to the school and nothing is being taught? How dare you show up at the house of God week in and week out and don't know what's in the word of God? Let's get ready. Jude is going to lay out to us some historical examples of apostasy. Let's take a look. Number one, the apostate of people. Y'all with me? Y'all got the Bible on the Facebook? Stay with me. Say this one is the apostate, the apostate of people. How I many of a people can become a apostate? Remember what the word apostate means? It means a departure or a turning away from the Jews said we got to fight for the faith. We got to fight for the totality of truth that God has given us in his word. How many of you are ready to fight? Amen. How many of you believe that Jesus has done enough for you and for me that we got to contend for the faith? Verse 5 of the book of Jude says this. Verse 5. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. Did we just deal with a whole series for March? Didn't God save the children of Israel from Egypt, from Pharaoh, which is a type of the world that Jesus Christ has delivered you and I from, those of us who are truly saved? Verse 5 said, but I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroy those who what? Did not believe. Please stay with me. Can I get your undivided attention? Say the apostate with people. Apostate. Notice what you just alluded to. There was a whole nation of people that God showed up and delivered out of the hand of Pharaoh from the place of Egypt. And there came a time they would not believe. What did you just alluding to here? It is possible. It is possible to see the power of God at work and still become a people that's apostate. Oh, y'all not for me. I mean, y'all should be clapping and applauding about that. The children of Israel saw God's power over and over and over again. Can I get a witness? And though they saw God's power over and over, they came, became a people that became a, an apostate. They saw God delivering them from Egypt. Can I get a witness to hell? While they were being burned and beaten by Pharaoh, God showed up through Moses and he set his people free. Not only did God deliver them from Egypt by his power, God opened up the Red Sea and allowed them to walk through on dry ground by his power. How many know the power of God? But not only did God deliver them from Egypt, not only did God only allow them to walk through a Red Sea on dry ground, God gave them water out of a rock. How many know that's the power of God? God's power can do the impossible. Not only did God give them water out of a rock, God fed them every brand new morning with manna from heaven. How many know the power of God did that? And in spite of God delivering them from Egypt, in spite of God opening up a red sea and allowing them to walk through on dry ground, in spite of God giving them water out of a rock, in spite of God feeding them with manna from heaven, there was a group of them that did not believe and they became an apostate. And the reason I want to slow down now, because there are many people, even sitting here, have seen the power of God, and yet you still turn away from the truth. What about I got twins. They saw almost 24 years ago, they know me love them things that he did, you know? I love the drink. I love the girls. I love that. And they saw the power of God show up in my life. And by God's grace and God's power, when I was pursuing the world, when God's power touched my heart, I left the world and pursued the word. Yeah. They know that Lee could not do that on his own. It took the power of God. And though they saw the power of God year after year, they kept saying, Lee coming back. And God said, no, he ain't. I touched his life a long time ago. He is mine. Are y'all following me? What point am I trying to make here today? There are those who know me personally and saw the power of God and see the power of God in my life and will testify about it. 
but yet they are apostate because they will not embrace the truth. Are y'all following me? Yes, sir. This is what the children of Israel did. God looks down upon unbelief when he's proven to you that he is God. And every one of us in here, even though watching my Facebook live, you know there's been a moment in your life, you know it was nobody but the Lord that did that thing for you. And yet you still are willing to sit and walk and behave in your sin instead of embracing the truth. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12, Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. What am I trying to say? In the apostate of people, here is people that saw the power of God at work right there in their lives, right there before them, and yet they departed from them. Amen. Jesus knew that man had the legions of demons. Jesus got off that boat. Those demons drug that man to Jesus, did he? And as Jesus said, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion. For we are many. And those demons begin to beg and uh, uh, begin to try to make a deal with you. Jesus, don't send us to that place. Let us go into the swine. And Jesus said, go. What point am I making here today? It's possible to see the power of God and become a people that's an apostate. Jesus set that man free from thousands of demons. That man was naked. Jesus told him he was out of his mind, in his right mind. Jesus had changed his life. And you know what the people of that town told Jesus? Get out of here. We don't want you around here. And there are people that show up and see the power of God working in beauty, working in family member, working in friends. But yet they continue to turn their back to the truth. These children of Israel, they became an apostate because they did not believe. Is that you this morning, Facebook? Though you tune in every Sunday morning, though you come to in-person service every week and you love the way I get up and talk, but have you come to the point to embrace the truth with your heart? Remember, God doesn't have grandchildren. God only has children. Either you're born again or you're not. Can I get a witness to him? Number one, we see the apostate of people. But now, let's see the apostate with principalities. People can experience the power of God and yet turn away from the true virgin. Verse 6 here in the book of Jude. Y'all still got this Bible open? Not only an apostate with the people, but an apostate with principalities. Here in verse 6. And the angels who did not Keep their proper domain. But did what? Left their honorable, he has what? Reserved and what? Everlasting chains under darkness. I want to see that. For the judgment of the apostate can come among people who see the power of God. And it's sad to say that apostate came among the principalities who were in the presence of God. It is possible to grow up in the church, come up to the church all your life, and truly be a part of a church where the presence of God is there in His Word, moving, changing, moving by changing people's hearts and changing people's lives. And though you know the presence of God is there, in the past. It can happen with people, and guess what? It can even happen that we're going to see right now with principalities. For those who know principalities were angels who turn into demons. Ephesians chapter 6. Paul said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities. Powers. Rulers of darkness. Spiritual wickedness and what? See, see, many of us, you know, it's, it's amazing. I, I say this all the time. I bet the devil and his demon just sit back in the corner of churches and houses and just laugh. Look at the fools. Look at them. They trying to kill one another when we are the one influencing the situation. 
They poking out one. Oh, he's getting on my nerves. And, then, and we brought this fight versus keeping it in the spiritual realm. We are bringing it where? In the physical realm. What my second point? Let's read the text again here in verse 6 of the book of Jude. And the angels who did not keep their what? Proper domain. They did not keep their, their proper state. Watch this now. But left their own abode, he has reserved in what? Everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the what? Great day. We could be an apostate with people as people. And there was an apostate with principalities. Why? The angels are too many to count. Only God knows how many angels there are. Amen? Amen. But there came a time. Now many want to relate this to Genesis chapter 6. They say that the angels slept with the women. I don't buy that as theology because I believe there's too many other scriptures. You know, God, when they were asked the question about divorce, and Jesus said, they're going to be like the angels. And if you really do a study, all of the angels in the Bible, anytime you see an angel that does take on a human form, guess what? It's as a male. Amen. Push it. I know, I know these paintings and all this happening. You know, anytime, see, that's what you got to get in the book. Anytime you see angels in the Bible, when they do turn themselves up or come in the form of human beings, they are as men. But I don't believe this is that, that incestuous uh, thing in Genesis 6. I just simply believe the apostate was the devil and the, de the demons, they, they were angels at first. God did not create the devil, God created Lucifer. Lucifer became the devil. I, I don't believe, I believe that this text is talking about the apostate happened with the angels, the principality, and they were in the presence of God. But as mom and them used to say, they got too big for their britches. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They started smelling themselves. In other words, Ezekiel chapter 28 says, there came a time, the very uh, uniqueness that God had made Lucifer. Oh, he was a beautiful anointed cherub. He was bright and glorious. He had all this beautiful instruments in it. He began to think more highly of himself. Yes, the Bible warns us about that, right? Yes, Be careful about thinking more highly of yourself than you are. I believe what Jude is alluding to here, the angels left their first domain because they did not settle on being satisfied worshiping God. They wanted to be worshipped. Let me, let me put Revelation chapter 12 verse 4. Revelation chapter 12 verse 4 says this. Since y'all think I'm kidding. Stay, stay, stay with me. Revelation chapter 12 verse 4 says, His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Satan, Lucifer, had enough deception. Remember, Paul is dressing the false teachers. Lucifer had enough deception that he influenced a third of the angels to rebel against God. Do not take the power of deception that the devil has. Like, didn't he get Eve to eat from that tree? And any time we're not born of the spirit and we're not spirit filled and we're not connected to the word of God, the devil would deceive me and you as well. I said the apostate happened with principalities as well because the angels did not keep their proper domain. They were called to worship God, but Lucifer wanted to be worshipped. Isaiah 14 proves my case. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 says this. Are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Are y'all still here? Yes, sir. See, what we're doing, we're looking at some historical examples of apostate. We got to learn from things in time past so we don't make the same mistake. Isaiah 14 says, verse 12, how you are fallen from heaven. Remember what Revelation just said, right? How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. Son of the what? Morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you who say in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Y'all see Lucifer arrogant? Yes, he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne what? above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation in the farthest sides of the north. 
Now watch this. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Y'all know what the devil was telling God at that time? I'm coming for your seat. Yeah. See, see, this is how they did not keep their proper abode. Instead, in Lucifer and the angels being so by what God created them to do, and God created them to worship him, they wanted to be worshipped. And they became an upon stain. Verse 15. Lucifer was bragging about what he was going to do. But he forgot who he was talking to. Yes, Notice what God's response to Lucifer is. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lower depths of the pit. The old King James said, to the side, the pits of hell. Are y'all following me? Yes, Notice there with the apostate of principality, the angels who were in the presence of God. There came a time, in spite of being in God's presence, they became an imposter. Can I slow down and say this long enough? Is that you, Facebook? Is that you that's sitting in this building? You've been a part of the church, the building, but you've never been a part of the church, the body? Can I say that again? Yes, you've been a part of the church, the building, the four walls. But you've never really connected with the church, the body. See, you got to be born again to become a part of the body of Christ. It's not about religion, it's about being righteous. You can be experiencing the very presence of God and still be in apostate. We see the apostate with people. We see the apostate with principalities. But how many know there's apostate in places as well? That's moving to verse 7 of the book of Jude. Verse 7. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to what? Sexual what? In more reality. And going after what? Strange flesh and are set forth as in what? Example, suffering the vengeance of eternal life. Now for those who fell asleep, maybe for a couple of seconds notice with the apostate of people God dealt with them. He judged them. The apostate of principalities, what God did, he dealt with them. He judged them. And now we're going to see the apostate in places. How many know places, cities, nations can become in apostate? The Bible makes it crystal clear here in the text. There's a I don't even want to call it no preacher. In Virginia. Let me tell you, that's why you better know what thus saith the word. This man has a huge church in Virginia. Thousands of members up there. He's on the internet all over the world. He was calling himself teaching a Bible study. And he was dealing with the situation of Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what he said to read? Listen to what his reasoning and when I begin to read the feed, I had to chime in. Oh, that's why. And this is what people say on, on, on the feed. That's why I love this. And he makes you think. Oh, he gives you an open mind about different things. This guy was saying the reason God judged Sodom and Gomorrah is because when the angels came, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah didn't show hospitality to the people. Now, how can you read? And the first thing I did, I said, no, 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 no. Go to Jude. Go to Peter and see what Jude and Peter say. See, you got to be able to cross-reference scripture. Can I get a witness there? This man was teaching that the reason God judged Sodom and Gomorrah, it was because the people of Sodom and Gomorrah did not show hospitality to the men that came into the city. Question. What does the Bible say here in verse 7? Let's read it again. Because there can be apostate with people, apostate with principality, but there can be apostate with places too. Listen to this, verse 7 again. As Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to a lack of hospitality. Is that what the text says? Oh, they just weren't kind to their neighbors. They were the state farm. That's not what the Bible said. And this is what blows my mind. Thousands of those people were clapping and applauding. He makes you faint. No, he's an apostate. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible makes it clear. Having given themselves over to what? Sexual immoral. I said, why did Lord say, don't do this great wickedness and that lack of hospitality? 
See, if you just know a little bit of the Bible, you can defend some of the junk that's being propagated these days. But when you don't know, you're led astray. He said, over to sexual immorality and going after strange flesh. And I'll set forth as an example, suffering what? The vengeance of Sodom and Gomorrah became an apostate because of their wickedness. There was a time in Genesis 18 when God, who had a relationship with Abram, Abraham, he began to tell Abraham what he was going to do to Sodom and Gomorrah. Can I get a witness? Yes, but, but this is the thing that, that, that Abraham knew Lot was not there. And, and Abraham began to intercede and that's what we need when we see people out there in that lost world. How many are interceding for your family members? How many are on your knees lamenting before God, crying out for your cohort? Lord, save them. Give me an opportunity to share the gospel with them so their lives can be changed. Abraham began to intercede. And he began to say, God, if there are 50 righteous, would you spare it? God said, yeah. And God, if there be 40 righteous, would you yeah, yeah. And we understand that God judged them because they were really even Lot, who was righteous, was not living a righteous life. Yeah. Can, can I tell you this? This Father's Day, this won't count you none extra father. Be careful. Lot chose a place to raise cattle rather than raising children. See, when Lot looked down, when Abraham understood, I'm God with me. It don't matter. See, whatever direction I go, God going to bless me because, God, you don't stop God's blessing in my life. He told Lot, whatever direction you go, you go north, I'm going south. You go east, I'm going west because God with me. Can I get a witness? And the Bible said when Lot looked and he saw that the plain was watered, beautiful and green, guess what? He looked for a place to raise cattle, but he didn't look as a father a place to raise sheep. Be mindful of leading your children in a place that can cause their souls to be damned for. Yeah, the word damned means condemned. Yes, can I get a witness? Yes, be careful. Let them sit in front of that TV watching all that junk with sexual intent on it. And then you wonder why they get out there and do some of the things. Remember, he got his daughters out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but he couldn't get Sodom and Gomorrah out. Of his daughters. The Bible says here in Jude, verse 7, they were committing strange flesh. What does that mean? They were doing things that were what? Unnatural. Human beings. You can learn a lot from animals. I love watching animal kingdom. That male lion who's took it over the pride. You let another male lion try to come close to his pride. Let's get ready. <laughs> That's what that lion gonna tell the mother lion. Let and matter of fact, they flex their roar. Yes, sir. See, you gotta understand animal culture. He'll throw out his roar because that roar sound it signifies his power. And he'll pull off his raw before he has to put his claws on. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? See, see, th th this is what we got to realize. Because even the animals got enough sense to understand that if offspring is going to come, it takes a male and a female. Can I push it? You cannot crank a car with two negative poles. You cannot crank a car with two positive poles. You got to have positive and a negative. What was going on here in Southern Gamora? They were doing that which was unnatural. Romans chapter 1, verse 24. I'm just preaching a book. You in the book, man. This is not against a personal attack against anyone, it is a personal attack against the apostate. And I simply made a decision as a pastor. I said this last week. Let me repeat it for those who are not here. If you don't want the word, you don't want me. Can I get a witness there? Because the only thing I'm going to stand up here and preach is the B-I-B-L-E. Now, if you don't want that, you don't want me. Listen to what Romans chapter 1 says. Verse 24. 
Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God. What is the apostate? The apostate is denying or turning away from the truth. Now God made me this way. I got a right to know who I want to love but not according to the Bible. Let's get ready to run. I love everybody. But I love Jesus above everyone. Verse 24. Therefore God also gave them unto them cleanness and the lust of their hearts to the sign of their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. And worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed how long? Forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to what? Vow passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the women burning their lust. For one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was deed. That's not me making that up. That's a holy God telling us that even places can become what? In apostate. And you and I know there are cities in America. If you walk the street, what is unnatural, they're now calling natural. And guess what they do when you try to tell them the truth? I don't want to hear it. And they'll call you all kind of names. Yes, all because you draw the line and say, let's get ready to run. Jesus will judge city. Jesus will judge nations. You know how I know the Bible tells me so. <laughs> In Luke chapter 13. I'll move on to our last one. Luke chapter 13. Listen at this. Luke chapter 13. Excuse me. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 verse 13. Luke chapter 10 verse 13. Listen what Jesus said. Woe to you, Charizard. Woe to you, Messiah. For if the mighty works were, which were done in you had been done in tears, sin on, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for tears and sin on at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven and will be brought down to Hades, hell, he who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. You know, Jesus just said, because all the miracles that he did there, they would not believe. Yes, they did not accept the truth that he was the Messiah. And Jesus said it would be more tolerable in the day of judgment for tears and sin. Than for you, Shiraz and Bethesda. Can I get a witness? Yes, Apostate can happen with people. Apostate can happen with principalities. Apostate can happen in places. And apostate happens because of prayer. And we're living in a world right now where pride is the main thing. Have you ever seen a time where you just can't tell people nothing? Mm -hmm. oh, somebody put the post of, uh, I know where it was, oh, Katia, put the post about accountability. You gotta have more accountability than just you. <laughs> and some people don't want nobody telling them they're wrong. Can I tell you why, Jasmine? It's because of pride. You know, I used to love rap music back in the day. You know, we had real rap. Yeah, I love J and Run, DMC, who did he, how did You know, we had good rap. You can listen to a whole CD and not hear one curse word. Forget about that now. Amen? Good stuff. Now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> That's the reason I was bring up my rap. But, but, but I'm trying to take pride. Oh, I'm, thank you. The other rap group, uh, De La Soul, me, myself. See, God good. <laughs> There's a rap group called De La Soul, and they had a song, It's Just Me, Myself, and I. It's just me, myself, and I. And that's the way some people in the church live. It's just me, myself. They want the whole world, the church, and everybody to evolve around 
them. Remember, Jude is dealing with the apostate. He's dealing with the false teachers. Yet there's apostate of people. There's apostate of principality. There's apostate of places. But now there's apostate because of pride. Let's take up verse 8 in our conclusion. How many are glad you came to church? Facebook, stay with me. Uh, notice what Jude says here in verse 8. Likewise, also these dreamers. Be careful of these people that always got dreams. Now, does God use dreams? He's God. He can use it. But people, they don't never want to tell you, tell you what the word says. They want to tell you what their dreams say. <laughs> so I suppose to always believe your dream more than the word. See, that's how people get led astray. Can I get a witness? He said, but I want, excuse me, not verse 5, verse 8. Likewise, also these dreamers, those who are detached from reality, they live in this world of delusion. So spiritual, but so lost. You know, people always have a dream. They, they think they're so spiritual, and they be so far from the word of God. I be sitting back. See, when the Bible says we are peculiar people, it means we are different, not, not, not weird. <laughs> You ever find some people who say they're saved and they're weird? Yeah. And you, man, I don't want to be around him. I don't want to no. know. We're called to be different. Yeah. Not weird. That's why if you check me, I'm going to check the fire out you. <laughs> they know how to check. Can I get a witness? Uh, because God ain't called me to be weird. He called me to be different. He didn't call me to be holy and righteous. Can I get a witness there? But now, Jew says, likewise, also these dreamers, these people that live, and guess what, y'all? Social media has given people a platform to live in a delusion world. Amen. A delusional world. Let me get my word. A delusional world. <laughs> See, people sit back on social media knowing that they one place at the house, one person at the house, and they put this out on social media, and they think they detached from people to thank you something when you know that you're not. He's talking about these dreamers. What? Defile the flesh. Now remember now, the whole premise is these false teachers, they're corrupt. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 7, you could judge a tree by what? The fruit it bears. When you look at someone who calls themselves a preacher, number one, check their doctrine and then check their character. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Yeah, all they do. Ain't nobody perfect. Yeah, I know ain't nobody perfect, but if you're going to stand up there and preach that word, you better be living a right, a life worthy of being up there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I get a witness there? Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh. What they do? Reject authority. I, 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 I'm a slut. Y'all, give me 10 minutes. Listen, those dreamers who live in this false reality, they live in this delusional world. And, and guess what? He's talking about these false teachers now. And, and many believers, well, they ain't believers. These false, they appear to be believers. And guess what they do? They reject authority. You ever find somebody? Let me tell you something. Let me, this is not going to get cost you nothing extra. Anytime you see uh, around people, whether it's on a job, me as a pastor, if they always got something negative to say about authority, they're rebels. Amen. Okay, let me come on this side. See, y'all scared. Let me say it again. Why are we doing it that way? Just can't say, they ain't telling me to do nothing wrong. Let me just submit to what they're saying. If they always got to critique anything of those in authority has to say, it's because they are rebels. You watch people like that. They want to scrutinize, but then if we scrutinize you, Facebook, <laughs> What would we see? Can I get a witness? Watch this now. Apostates reject authority. You take these ministries that fleece the flock. They, I've been in that teacher a long time ago. A time, long, long time ago. Those apostates reject authority. When you go to those churches, they have absolutely no accountability. They can write a check they want to write. They can do everything. And they and, and listen, this is what God said in the, in the Old Testament. And my people love to have a soul. Well, that's what pastor said. That's what bishop said. That's what bishop said. That's what bishop said. But what does the Bible say? He got the checkbook. He got the women. He got everything in the church. And they sit 
Elias, ini oblong Gak salut bisa, gak salut bisa I'm telling you, I'm not telling you something I'm making up. I done been around that. They have no accountability. And God even, even ain't their accountability because they do whatever they want to do. They reject, apostates reject authority and they slander the opulence. Little devils. When you're always slandering, you know that's what the word means, right? The opulence, little devil. People always slandering. Always rejecting authority. Look at us and say, hey, get off, <laughs> What you mean, you little devil? See, see, I'm not afraid to teach that this is the Bible. Now watch this. Let's continue on. Let's finish this. Let's wrap this up. Say historical, historical. examples yeah. of apostasy. Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Now watch this. So God drops through Jude, this great parallel here, he said even Michael, an archangel, didn't rebel against Satan's authority. Verse 9, yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dare not bring against him a what? Rivaling accusation, accusation but say what? The Lord rebuked. You know, Michael says to Satan, God has given you that authority. And I dare not speak against it. But what I will tell you, Lucifer, is what? The Lord rebuke you. Yeah. You're in the book, man. Please. Can I get a witness? Yes, sir. Michael, who's an archangel. You read Daniel chapter 10. When the prince of Persia was holding up a Daniel. And God said, I said, see, that's where the battle is. It's in the spiritual realm. Can I get a witness there? Daniel said, I mean, God said, after I, when I done fasted for what, three weeks? And Michael had to come and deliver to Daniel what the Lord had said. Can I get a witness there? But even Michael showed respect to the, you know, let me tell you what Mama and them used to say. You know, Mama, respect is due to a dog. Michael even shows respect. I always say, no. No matter if it's, if it's Biden, it's Trump, if it's Obama, whoever it is, I respect the office, but I can say, you know, that what that person is doing is wrong. Yes, sir. I can separate the two. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes, God calls, called us to respect Lord. authority. Yes, I know it's tight, but it's right. But now watch this, y'all. Let's get it. Let's get it. Yeah, Michael, an archangel continued with the devil when he spewed it. How many know God buried Moses' body? Yes, if God didn't bury Moses' body, children of Israel be worshiping it to this day. He says, against him arriving an accusation for saying, the Lord will you through, but these be evil or whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like who be. And these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them. I talked about the cartoon last week, Looney Tunes. Something about the Looney Tunes, oh, yo, Simity Sam. When I say woe, I mean woe, you. Anytime in the Bible, when you see God put woe, you better pay attention. God ain't playing. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain. Remember now, apostate, a people apostate, a principality, apostate, a place, but apostate because of pride. The false teachers are full of pride. They reject authority. They follow their lust. They do all kind of corrupt and evil things. Group bees in these things. They corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain. Let me tell you what the false teacher would do. Cain, y'all know what Cain did, Cain and Abel? He was self-righteous and wanted to present it like he was righteous. Yes, sir. False teachers are always self-righteous. Can I get a witness? Yes. Read your Bible, Genesis chapter 4. See, that's what I'm saying. Get off of Facebook and get in this book. Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 4, Cain did not bring the offering that God wanted. Abel brought a righteous sacrifice by faith. But Cain did. Now, not only he speaks of Cain, 
He said, have one greedily in the era of Balaam. Pride caused Cain to want to bring a selfish, self-righteous offering. Pride caused Balaam to rebel by merchandising his ministry for money. Balaam prostituted God's calling on his life for that dollar dollar bill, y'all. He was a prophet, not P R O P H E T, P R O F I T. That prophet. Y'all. Yeah, I gotta be careful when I'm studying these words. That bell got hit. Y'all get that. English was my, y'all can tell English was my strong suit. <laughs> Cain rebelled against God's way of being righteous. Balaam rebelled by merchandising his ministry for money. And Korah rebelled, resenting the leadership of Moses. They all became apostate because of pride. Jude, in the key verse, says, Let's get ready Wrong. to run. Jude wanted to talk about their common salvation. That was his desire. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, Jude had to take a detour. And he had to talk about contending for the faith. We've heard this one in part two. Historical examples of apostasy. Apostasies can happen even if you see the power of God, you can still push away truth. Apostasies can happen even when you experience the presence of God and you can still push away truth. But most importantly, apostates happen because we're full of pride. We don't want the truth. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this, this one chapter book, but it's so rich in doctrine and power. Holy Spirit, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Father, I desire to preach your word compassionately, clearly, but most importantly, Father, I want to preach it correctly. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being my source. Thank you for bringing us ears to hear what the Spirit wanted to say today. Lord, we love you, and we appreciate you for all that you are and all that you do. These are all blessed we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand? Clap and praise. Come on, can we give the Lord a hand? Clap and praise. Praise the Lord. Remember, you're going to stay with me. Once again, we are so grateful for God. Amen? Amen. How many are grateful for the Word of God? Amen. Amen. It is through the Word of God that our lives are changed. But at this moment, we want to now present an opportunity for those with, by the way of Facebook or those in person to give. Amen? Once again, we are embarking on a very monumental project, and we still need us to give faithfully to the Lord. Amen? I have to give just like you have to give. And we talk about three ways that you can give. Number one, you can go to www.beulahbbc.com. Click on that donation button. You can give discreetly right there. And listen, if you are comfortable, we will appreciate if you give online. That way, the financial office has less to deal with when we gather. But listen, if you're not comfortable, we have another way. Once again, you can mail it to us. Beulah Baptist Church, 619 East Anderson Street, Savannah, Georgia, 31401. Currently, until we tell you different, those who brought their offering by the church still, our old location, 619 East Anderson Street, you can still do that in our front door. You can still do that until we have the building demolished and then we will come up with another method. Once again, we thank God for those who have been so faithful over the months, even through the pandemic, continue to build by faith and give it to the work of the Lord. Amen? Amen. At this time, it is the third Sunday. Has everyone on my right got their elements? Everyone on my left got their elements? In Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, at Beulah Baptist Church, we seek to honor and obey the Word of God. We could take communion every week, but we have designated the third Sunday of each month to be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus getting to the end of his earthly ministry. He's sitting in the upper room, have made ready the Passover supper. God had told the children of Israel. He wanted them to annually observe the Passover that they could reflect, they could remember what God had did for them. And this is what the communion is all about. It's about having a monthly refresher, a monthly remembrance about what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. This is not just something to do. You know, when I was a little boy, you know, first thing is just make sure you get your communion. Make sure you get I didn't even have an understanding about communion. No, this is about us uh, remembering and us reverencing what God did for us by sending his only begotten son to die for our sins. Jesus being the blameless, spotless lamb of God. Jesus sitting in the upper room with his disciples. Mark's gospel chapter 14 verse 22 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for me. And surely I say to you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Brothers and sisters, what we are doing here today is sacred. It is not to be taken lightly nor for granted because we are remembering his body. We are remembering his blood. Let us pray. Father, in the gracious and wonderful name of Jesus, Lord, as we approach this sacred part of the service, Lord, we lift up these elements unto you. The way from what represents the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and this juice which represents his blood that was shed for our sins. Holy Spirit, search our hearts. The cracks, the crevices where we've tucked away pride and lust, slander, jealousy. Lord, we want you to do like Psalm 139. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Try us and know our thoughts. See if there be any wicked way within us and lead us in the way of everlasting. Father, I pray right now that every man, every woman, by Facebook and in person, have allowed you to search their heart. And Lord, we come confessing our sin before you right now. Thank you for being that faithful God that will forgive sin. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. They all eight, let us eat together. And they all drank. Let us drink together. They went on to a mind of olives. We don't have a mind of olives, but we have a world where people are dying in sin. It is our responsibility to make sure that we share the gospel. I ask that you please hold on to your cups as we depart. There will be ushers at the back door with containers to put our cups. We don't want to leave anything in the pews. Amen? Also, before we depart, once again, if you're watching my Facebook Live and you've been seeing our ministry over the time of the pandemic, and you want to be a part of Beulah, or if you visited today and you want more information about Beulah, we would love, we would love to give you that information. Please reach out to us right there, make it known, the number, and we will get in contact with you. Or if you are concerned about your salvation, you're not really confident whether you're really saved, please give me a call. Please give me a call and we do our best to keep, take you through the word of God to show you what salvation really is. Amen? If you're watching my Facebook and you're not, you're not sure of your salvation, we want to make sure that you are saved and you know that you're saved without any hesitancy. You know without a doubt, I'm saved. Please reach out to us. Amen? Also, there are flyers that have been, I believe some have been passed out. Uh, the Sisters Connection Ministry are planning a women's trip to Atlanta, Georgia called Glory with Speaker Jackie Edo Perry. It's a woman graced by God to teach the Word of God. Amen? Uh, there will be flyers that are put around of uh, giving out. Please, if you're interested in going on this trip, Sisters Connection is... Not so much sponsor, it's going to be individual. Please contact 
Sister Jermaine Edwards or Sister Kim Dawson, the numbers are on the flyer for more information about the trip. Any ladies that are interested in going on this trip to Atlanta, Georgia, to Jackie Hill Perry, uh, date? October 1st, 2nd, excuse me, you know, overlooking it. October 1st through 2nd, please. See this fire, please give Sister Terrain and Sister Kim a call. Amen? Amen. May we stand to our feet as we look to be dismissed. Quiet, please give us our time of selection.
taking those out. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the truth in your word. Thank you, Lord God, that we can come to a place where we can hear truth. Lord God, I just pray that as we hear this truth, Lord, you'll let it permeate our hearts and our minds, Lord. That as we go out into this world, Lord, when there's an opportunity to defend this faith, we'll be prepared through your word. Lord, we can't just wait till getting the word on Sunday or Tuesdays to be prepared. We must be prepared at all times if we're going to defend the faith. We must be training every day. So, Lord God, we just thank you that we can hear your truth, that we can go out and do what it is you called us to do. We thank you today, we honor you, and we glorify you. And it's in Jesus' name.